Hello, Dr. Joe here of the drjoe.com and the 2020 forum.com. So today, I want to talk to you guys about vitamin D and how you can optimize your acquisition of vitamin D from the best source of vitamin D. And what's the best source of vitamin D? Well, of course, is the sun. The sun represents the most cost-effective and efficient way of acquiring your vitamin D. But there are questions that uh, need to be answered regarding the production process of getting vitamin D from the sun. And that's what I'm going to be dealing with in today's video. I'm going to be answering questions regarding the initial production process, uh, the factors that influence how much vitamin D you get from uh, the sun, as well as how much vitamin D you can expect from each sun exposure, uh, the frequency of exposure, the duration of exposure that you need to get the required amount of vitamin D. All of that we're going to be answering uh, in this very video. So let's kick off with the initial production process. Exposure of the skin to the sun triggers the vitamin D production process. So once the UV rays interact with the 7 dehydrocholesterol that is present in the skin layers, that triggers the vitamin D production process. And uh, what happens then is that once the UV rays interact with the 7 dehydrocholesterol that is present in the skin layers, you form what we call pre vitamin D3. And pre vitamin D3 is also known as cholecalciferol. So once you form the cholecalciferol, uh, that is the uh, initiation process of how vitamin D is made. Of course, uh, there's a further production process that moves on to the liver and the kidneys, but we're not going to talk about that today uh, in this very video presentation. So like I said earlier on, the 7 dehydrocholesterol is present in all skin layers, but nature has been very kind to us in the sense that the outermost layer of the skin, which is the epidermis, okay, this epidermis, that's when 95% of the pre-vitamin D is made. Some is made in the deeper layers of the skin, the dermis and the hypodermis, uh, but uh, the bulk of it is made in the skin epidermis. And that's good because that's the layer that is in direct contact uh, with the sun ultraviolet rays. Now, pre-vitamin D3, the cholecalciferol that you make, cannot be washed away from the skin. And uh, here is something else you should know. So something else you should know is that the natural production of vitamin D uh, is uh, regulated. So the cholecalciferol that is made initially is regulated. What that means is that you cannot really overdose on your vitamin D requirements naturally. You can overdose with uh, vitamin D supplements, but not natural production of vitamin D. So you need not worry that uh, you might be making too much vitamin D when you expose your skin to the sun. So how about we look at the factors that influence how much vitamin D that you can expect to make? So we'll talk about the factors that influence the production of vitamin D, starting off with the pre-vitamin D3, the cholecalciferol uh, production. Skin pigmentation is one. Uh, the more melanin you have, uh, the harder you're going to work to make your vitamin D. Now, white skin individuals have a little or no melanin. Uh, what that means is they make vitamin D a lot more easily than uh, uh, dark-skinned individuals. And that's because of the presence of the melanin that blocks the penetration of the UV rays uh, to uh, the skin layers. Sunscreen uses another. Uh, the sunscreen provides a barrier. Uh, although there is some evidence lately that sunscreen might not be such a barrier after all, but uh, the jury is still out on that. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. Clothing is another. When you have clothing on, of course, that provides a barrier between the UV rays uh, penetrating through to uh, the uh, skin layers. Uh, time of the day is another factor uh, to consider, the, and that refers to the angle of the sun. And what that means is the mornings and the evenings, they are an inefficient time to uh, make vitamin D. So uh, it's a factor to bear in mind. Season is another factor to bear in mind. Uh, the winter months, for instance, during the winter months, what happens then is the UVB band rays, uh, they have a longer path to travel uh, from the sun to heat your skin. And uh, in any case, even though they have a longer path to travel, uh, there's another factor here, another sub factor to consider. And that is the fact that a lot of the UV rays, they are absorbed by the ozone layer during their journey uh, to the earth 
uh, to uh, heat our skin. So uh, that's the reason why during the winter months, it makes sense for you to uh, use vitamin D supplements because trying to get natural vitamin D during the winter months uh, is a non-starter really. Air pollution is another factor. Uh, the more smoke you have in the air, the more particles you have in the air, the less uh, UV rays that are going to penetrate through uh, to uh, heat our skin. So uh, that's another factor. And then of course, latitude and altitude. Uh, the closer you are to the equator, the easier it is for you to make vitamin D. Conversely, the further away you are from the equator, the harder it is for you to make vitamin D. So yeah, another factor there for you to consider. So here's something you should know. If you're sitting in your car in a traffic jam uh, with your windows up because you've got the AC on, uh, you might be thinking you're making vitamin D uh, because the sun is uh, hitting your face and your neck and your arms. Uh, well, no, you're not making vitamin D because the, the glass in your car window absorbs the uh, UVB rays. So the UVB rays cannot penetrate through the glass in your, on your car windows. So if you want to get vitamin D whilst you're traveling or you're in a traffic jam, then you need to turn off your AC, roll down your, your car windows uh, such that uh, the, the sun makes direct contact uh, with your skin without the glass uh, of the car window being a barrier uh, in itself because it is a barrier. And how much vitamin D can you expect to make from each sun exposure? So in terms of dosage, uh, let me give you a guide. And I'm going to use white-skinned individuals as a guide here. Now, if you're white-skinned, exposure of your skin to the sun that causes slight pinkness of the skin in a bathing suit, okay, like this lady you've seen here. So in her case, the face, the torso, the neck, the arms, the legs, uh, they're all exposed to the sun rays, the sun UV rays. Now, with this degree of exposure, you can expect to make about 20,000 international units of vitamin D equivalent of taking a supplement, okay? So this degree of exposure will make you this amount of vitamin D. Now, if you are exposing just your arms, your legs, and your face, you get 25% of this dosage, of these 20,000 international units. So when you expose just your arms, your legs, and your face, you can expect to make about 5,000 international units of vitamin D equivalent of taking the supplement. So, uh, yeah, that's a guide for you to know how much vitamin D you can expect to make depending on how much skin exposure uh, that you have available for, for the sun UV rays to penetrate. And how long sun exposure do you need? And uh, what's the optimum time that is best for you to obtain your vitamin D from the sun? So in terms of duration of exposure, for white-skinned individuals, you only need about 15 minutes exposure time. Okay, 15 minutes exposure time, not long. For black-skinned individuals, though, we need three times the exposure time. So we need about 45 minutes uh, to get the same amount of vitamin D as a white-skinned individuals because of the presence of the melanin. Uh, because the melanin is a potential barrier to the UV rays penetrating through to the skin layers. And what time of day is best? Well, between 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. That's the best time. That's the optimum time for you to make your vitamin D. 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. That's the optimum time. And what about the frequency of sun exposure? As for how many times a week? Well, you don't have to expose yourself seven times a week. You only need about two to three times a week exposure time. That's all you need, okay? Two to three times a week. Uh, between 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., uh, 15 minutes for white-skinned individuals and 45 minutes for black-skinned individuals. That is all that you need. So one more question. Why is it that people living in sunny places like the Middle East, Africa, the Caribbean, Texas, Florida, why is it that millions of people living in those places still end up with vitamin D insufficiency and sometimes deficiency? Why is that? Well, two reasons I can come up with. One has to do with clothing. If you're living in those sunny places and you're going out completely covered such that there's no direct contact between the sun UV rays and your skin, then of course, you're not gonna make the vitamin D. So that's one reason. The second reason has to do with duration of exposure. 
if you're living in those places and you try to avoid the sun by going into shaded areas, by staying put inside the buildings, then of course you're not going to have the direct contact between uh, the sun UV rays and your skin as well. Not enough long contact uh, and then of course you're not going to make uh, the required vitamin D. So the point is that you have to make a conscious effort, whether you're living in those sunny places or elsewhere, when the sun is available, you have to make a conscious effort to acquire the vitamin D from the sun. Anything short of that, you're not going to get the vitamin D. So it's a classic case of starving in the midst of plenty. So you've got plenty of sun, yet you are vitamin D deficient. Uh, that is uh, easily avoided. It's a problem you can fix easily. So uh, one quick announcement. My book is coming out shortly. Be on the lookout for that. In the next couple of weeks, the book will be out. Uh, so be on the lookout. Uh, you'll be the first to hear about it when uh, the book is released. So hopefully you got some value from this very video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. Please like the video. And also please share this video with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues. If you've got any questions, any comments regarding this uh, video presentation, go ahead and leave your comments down below. I think that's about it. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.